again. Um, this is lesson 10, part C. It's our final DC theory lesson about capacitance. So let's have a look at what it's going to be about. So in this particular lesson, we're going to examine some simple circuits involving resistors and a capacitor, which together can provide time delays. So we're working from a textbook again, um, Electrical Principles by Phillips, and we're looking at sections 10.7 through to 10.10. .10. So the RC circuit, that's resistor and a capacitor, the RC thing called a time constant, we're going to look at a time constants in detail. We're going to look at the universal time constant, and you'll understand why we call it the universal time constant when we get there. And then we're going to summarize all our lessons for lesson 10, um, A through to C. So before we get started, I'll just get my pen set up. So we're first into the RC, or the resistance capacitance circuit. A circuit with a resistor and a capacitor connected in series, and it must be in series, is called an RC circuit. A resistor is sometimes connected in series with a capacitor to limit the charge current a capacitor takes when it's first connected to a source voltage. Sometimes you don't want a lot of current to rush into the capacitor. You want the capacitor to charge up just gently. So sometimes we put a resistor in series to allow it to charge up slowly. We also sometimes put a resistor across it because sometimes when we de-energize an installation, we actually don't want to leave the capacitors charged up. So sometimes we put a high value, what's called a discharge resistor across the capacitors permanently, and that just slowly trickles and discharges the capacitors. So we sometimes put capacitors in series to limit the charge up speed. Sometimes we put them in parallel to discharge them slowly. Another reason is to introduce a time delay. So here's a circuit with a time delay. Sorry, with no time delay, I should say. So here we have a, uh, a battery. So I'll just quickly point out all the components first. So we've got a battery here. We've got ourselves a switch, an ammeter, measuring current, and a 10 ohm resistor in here. So we've got ourselves a resistor. So if we were to turn this circuit on, and we're going to turn the circuit on at this point in time, you'll notice the current in the circuit goes from zero to max instantly, or what we would call a step change. That's called a step change because it looks like a step. So an instantaneous change from zero amps to the full one amp. So current is purely resistive and it reaches its maximum value, well, pretty well, instantaneously. That's what that vertical line on the graph represents. We've changed instantaneously. No time delay there. Nice for turning things on and off, but no time delay. But now let's add a capacitor into the circuit. So here's our capacitor. Again, the only thing we've uh, really added into the circuit that is extra is our capacitor. Now, we're not too worried about what the actual capacitance value is right now, but the circuit hasn't changed. And you'll notice at this point of turn on, the current goes instantly to one amp, bang, but over time, it decays, is the word we use, it decays as the capacitor charges up and gets more and more charge in the capacitor, the amount of current diminishes until the current stops flowing altogether. In actual fact, once the capacitor has reached, in this case, the 10 volts of the battery, that's when the current stops flowing. So when the capacitor is the same voltage as the supply, no more current. 
So the capacitor has charged up at a particular rate because this resistor, the 10 ohms, has only trickled the current into the capacitor rather than allowing the capacitor to charge up instantaneously. Therefore, we have created a time delay. So in here, we have an effective time delay. So that's our time in here. And we'll see how we use that time or time delay in a moment. We just need to understand the principle first. So in RC circuit, the capacitor takes time to charge because of the resistor. It's not inherent in the capacitor, it's because the resistor is in series. As the capacitor charges, the voltage across the capacitor rises and the current decreases. So the voltage and the current do the opposite to each other. So here's a little diagram showing the time delay sequence. So going to turn my pen on, it's the same circuit. We're still running my pen on, no it didn't, for some reason it didn't do it, there we go. We're still running 10 volts, we've still got an ammeter in the circuit, we've still got 10 ohms and we've still got our capacitor. So at the moment we start our stopwatch here at zero seconds, so zero seconds, switch is closed, the voltage across the resistor, you'll notice, bang, it goes up to the highest. The voltage across the capacitor is at its minimum, and the current goes to its maximum. So at the instant of switch on, the voltage across the capacitor is zero, current through the capacitor is full one amp, and the voltage across our resistor is 10 volts. Now, after a little bit of time, right, so after a few seconds here, you just see a tiny bit of time, our current has dropped to half. The voltage across the resistor has dropped to 5 volts, but the voltage across the capacitor has increased to 5 volts. So our 5 plus 5 equals our 10 volts applied. So we've got 5 volts across the resistor and we've got 5 volts across the capacitor. So on our next slide we've got a bit more time now. So we've gone to 3 quarter time as it were. So we've kind of gone to 3 quarter time We've now got three volts across our resistor. The voltage across our resistor has dropped a little bit more. The voltage across our capacitor has increased again. It's continued to increase. The current has continued to decrease as the capacitor gets to about that three-quarter charge. Then our final slide here we're fully charged. So, full time here. Current has dropped all the way down to zero amps. And if there's zero amps, there's no voltage across our resistor. So our voltage across our resistor has dropped completely to zero because there's no current flowing in the circuit. Remember, a voltage drop can only occur when there is a current through the resistor. So no current, no voltage drop. Our capacitor though has stored up a whole heap of coulombs and there is 10 volts worth. So our voltage across our capacitor has charged right up to the 10. So current to zero, voltage across the capacitor to the maximum value and it's all happened over time.
Okay. So, time delay at switch off in this particular case. Now you'll notice that this circuit is the same but different. Over on the left hand side you'll notice there's no battery now. We've taken the battery out of the circuit. So we've got our capacitor fully charged and we're now going to discharge it through the same resistor. So no battery, we're now going to discharge our capacitor through the same resistor that we charged it through. So quite often I'll find students look at the circuit and go, it's no different, the circuit's no different. Well it is, there's just no battery in the circuit. So again, at this point where we close the switch and we start discharging the capacitor, you'll notice again the current goes to the maximum. Get our full one amp and our voltage is started at 10 volts. But as time goes on, the voltage and the current drop away. So the current then decreases across the capacitor and the voltage decreases across the capacitor. The voltage actually gets applied across the resistor. So the voltage across the resistor will go up and the resistor then dissipates that energy mostly as heat. So going to get a little bit of warmth, a little bit of heat coming out of this resistor. That's where the energy that was stored inside the capacitor is now dissipated as heat energy through the resistor. So we get a very similar curve whether we're charging or we're discharging. That's an important part of what this is trying to teach us. That the curve for charge and the curve for discharge are the same but are the reverse of each other. So 10.8, the RC time constant. What is a time constant? A time constant is a time taken for a current or a voltage to reach 63.2% of its final value. So there's a number worth writing on your equation sheet. And if you're one of my students, I'll actually give you a time constant graph which has that on the equation sheet. So if you haven't got that on your equation sheet, I'd suggest you write that uh, 63.2%. It's a very, very important number when it comes to time constants. So the time taken for the current or the voltage to reach its 63% of its final value is called the time constant. We use the uh, Greek symbol tau, which is a capital T but drawn small. So it's symbol tau for the time constant. In an RC circuit, a time constant is the time taken for the current to drop by 63%. Right, so in RC circuit, time constant is taken for the current. So the previous one, I'll just go back, time constant was for the voltage to reach 63%. This one is the time taken for the current to drop by 63%. Capacitor voltage to rise to 63.2% of its final value when the capacitor is being charged. So we're looking for an increase to 63% for charge for a drop of 63% for discharge. Capacitor voltage to drop by 63% when it's being discharged. So here's our equation. Tau, capital T drawn small, equals simply the resistance multiplied by the capacitance R times C, where tau or time constant is in seconds the capacitance is in farads, remember it's in farads, not microfarads, it's in full farads. And the R, the resistance, is in ohms. 
So here's an example. I've got a 40 volt supply, a 100 microfarad capacitor and a 5K resistor. So what is the time constant? Time constant is the R times the C. So if I take 5K, multiply it by 100 microfarads, I get 5 times 10 to the 3 to give me into thousands, times 10 to the minus 6 to put it in farads. Remember, I've got to get my microfarads into farads. Punch that into my calculator, and I've got a time constant of 0 0.5 seconds. So it's going to take half a second for the voltage to get to 63%. Well, 63.2, but we, we round it to 63 quite often. Close enough. So here's a little example. I'll just turn my pen back on again. Our 100 microfarads, our 5K, we're charging with 40 volts. So after one, after 0.5 of a second, that's here, I've charged up to 's current sorry done they're doing current first so I've gone from 8 milliamps to 2.9 so my current has dropped by 63 percent so they've done current first so the current has gone down by 63 percent so if I take my current I is V on R. So if I take my five, sorry, my my forty volts on the top, and I divide it by five K equals eight milliamps. Just thought I'd better explain. That's where the eight comes from. That's here. So when I first turn my circuit on. I'm going to get my full 8 milliamps. Half a second later, the current is going to drop by 63%, and it's going to drop down to 2.93 milliamps. So that's what one time constant is. So one time constant equals... 63.2%. So a second example. Look at this time we're looking at the capacitors um, charging voltage here on the left hand side. So again, I'll just turn my pen on. Remember we had 40 volts. So when we turn the switch on at this point here, we had zero volts. Then all of a sudden, the charge on the capacitor goes up. And at one time constant, at 0.5 of a second, I've charged up to at 63%. So what's 63% of 40? It's 25.5. By three, 25.3 volts. So there's my 63%. If you don't believe me, just multiply 40 by 0.63. It's 25.3. So again, that's one time constant. Has got me to 63% of the voltage. If we now look at the resistor voltage going up, or I should say the resistor, yeah, the resistor voltage. So at this point where we turn on for the resistor, the voltage starts at 40 volts across the resistor and it drops. So it drops by our 63 or one time constant. 
and it's going to drop from 40 volts down to 14.63. So we're either dropping down by 63% or we're rising up. So in the case of charging up, we're going up by 63. In the case of going down or discharging, we're dropping by 63. It's all about where you start. And here we're starting at the top and here we're starting at the bottom. So as the capacitor charges, after one time constant, the capacitor's voltage has risen by 63%. The voltage across the resistor has fallen by the 63%. So here's a little example, here's 500k into a 10 microfarad capacitor and we've got 40 volts across it. So what's the voltage after one time constant? So if you remember, we're dropping by 63%. So that voltage is going to go down by 63% percent after one time constant. So I've got to work out what the time constant is first. So our tau is R times C, which is 500 times 10 to the 3 to put it into K, and 10 times 10 to the 6, minus 6 I should say, to put this into farads. We find that we have a time constant of 5 seconds. So after one time constant, we're going to have 0.63. So we take 0.63 times 40. So we're going to have a voltage of So this example, again, we're just uh, reiterating the capacitor voltage and the discharge current this time. So we're thinking about, here's our five seconds. So we're looking at what we were doing with our math just there, it's all we're doing. So we turn the switch on, the capacitor voltage discharging straight away so we're discharging our capacitor and its job voltage is dropping by 63% or one time constant which in this case was five seconds and after five seconds it's at 14.7 the current's doing the exact opposite of course the discharge current Discharge current started at 80 microamps and then after 5 seconds the current had discharged by 63% and we were down to 29.4 microamps. So as the capacitor discharges after one time constant, the capacitor voltage has fallen by 63% and the discharge current has also fallen by 63%. So remember, it all depends on are we charging the capacitor up or are we discharging the capacitor. In this case, we were discharging the capacitor. So 10.9 time constants. After one time constant, there is a change of 63%, whether we're discharging or charging in the current and the voltage values in the RC circuit leaving only 36.8% to go. So if you're just wondering how we got the 36.8, it's pretty easy. If you take 100% and you minus 63.2, you're simply left with 36.8%. So that's how we get it.
after the second time constant, the value changes by 63.2% on the remaining 36%. So we go down by another 63, but our baseline has changed to 36. This sequence continues under a steady state is reached, so the capacitor is completely discharged or completely charged, whichever way you're going. So here's an example after two time constants. So simply got a couple of graphs here. And let's look at one time constant. So after one time constant, we've charged up to this point here, our 63.2%. So whatever the time constant is, that's what's happened after one time constant. After two time constants, you'll notice that the amount of time taken is the same. So one time constant plus another time constant gives us two time constants on the horizontal. So this is time constants. So at two time constants, we've gone 63% on the 63%, which if you do the maths is... 86.5 and of course if I was to take the graph out a little further and do a third time constant it's going to go out here and let me tell you by the time we get to the fifth time constant we're done so here is the whole graph done all the way out to the fifth time constant. So again, on the horizontal, this way, is the time constants. And we have time constant one, at the same distance we've got number two, same distance number three, same distance number four, and number five. On the left hand side we've got percent, so at one time constant there's our 62%, at two time constants we had our 86, and remember I extended the graph, so the next one is at 95, the next one is at 98, and the final one is at 99.3. Now you won't be asked to remember what the five time constant percentages are, it should be given to you on your equation sheet. So if you have a circuit and you're wanting to know what the voltage is at say two and a half time constants, so at 2.5 you'd need a time constant chart which is what this is and you just project up at two and a half and you project in across here and at two and a half you've got about 91%. There you go. So if you have a universal time constant chart and you know what your time constant is and you want to know what the voltage percent or the current percent is, at any point it's just a matter of reading it off the chart. So the graph shows the capacitor um, voltage change over time for five time constants. The discharge curve is exactly the same but in the opposite direction. So this is the same curve but we're now looking at discharge. We're starting at 100% and we're going down rather than starting at zero and building up. So again we've still got time constants in this direction and at one time constant on discharge There's our 63, sorry, our 36.8, or that's measured from the bottom up, by the way. So it's 63.8 from the bottom up, or from the top down, it's our 63%. So again, we're looking at discharge, so the graph is moving down. But we're measuring the percentages 
up the graph. So at this point, at the 36, uh, sorry, at the 63% discharge, we've got 36%. Then at two, we've got 13 and a half. At three time constants, we've got five. At four time constants, we've got 1.8. And at five time constants, we're down to almost zero at 0.7 of a percent. So this graph shows how capacitor voltage changes over time for five time constants in the discharge cycle. So here's a quick little worked example. We've got 50 volts supply, got a 100k ohm resistor and a 5 microfarad capacitor. So let's work out our tau, or our time constant here. And we simply do the math of multiplying the resistance and the capacitance. And we know that we have a tau of 0 0.5 seconds. So one second would equal two time constants. Nice and easy, isn't it? So we can uh, do a curve nice and easily. So equation two, after one time constant, we're going to take our 0.865, multiply it by the voltage, and our answer is 50 times 0.86. So our time, our voltage after two time constants, or one second, is 43 volts. So I remember that one second was two time constants, so we've dropped to 43 volts. Equation three, the I max, it's simply the voltage divided by the resistance. So we know we had 50 volts applied to the circuit and 100k ohm resistor. So simple ohms law, we've got 0.5 of a milliamp. And our equation four, what's the I max? What's the current after one second? So we know that um, it's 0.13 from our graph after one second or after two time constants, or 13.5%. So we take our 13.5%, we multiply by 1.35 into 0.5, and after one second or two time constants, we know that our current has dropped to 67.5 microamps. So they're the two important answers that we were after. After two time constants, voltage is at 43, and the current has dropped to 67.5 microamps. This is what we call the universal time constant chart. It's the one that I provide my students on their equation sheets. And the blue curve is the charge curve. The red curve is the discharge. Basically, they're the mirror image of each other. If they're the mirror image of each other, then they must cross at 50%. And you can see the graph crossing here at 50%, which happens at always 0.7. So just a little interesting aspect of the universal time constant chart. So these curves apply to all. RC networks. That's what we call it, the universal time constant chart. So if you know that you've got, say, three and a half time constants for a charging, let's say you're charging up a capacitor and you know you're at three and a half time constants, you want to know what the voltage will be at 3.5 time constants, you would simply project up here onto the graph and go across here. And that's going to be about 
So you're going to be about 95% charged at three and a half time constants. So time constants percentage change, you can do it on a chart or you can do it here on a table. This is just a table that represents the chart. And again, the reason we've done this is just to demonstrate this 50% point happens at 0.7 of a time constant. So that's the end of DC lesson 10 theory and the end of all the theory for DC indeed. So this is now a lesson summary for A, B and C. So capacitance is the property of a circuit or a component that stores an electrostatic charge and is formed between two conductors or plates separated by an insulator, that insulator called a dielectric. The unit of capacitance is the farad, named after Michael Faraday, an English physicist. Charge is Q, capital Q, stored in a capacitor and is equal to the capacitance multiplied by the voltage. The energy, W, stored in a capacitor is a half CV squared, so a half the capacitance voltage squared. Capacitance is directly proportional to the area of a capacitor's plates. Directly proportional to the dielectric constant K of the dielectric and indirectly proportional to the distance between the plates. So basically what we're saying is the more dielectric you've got, the higher the capacitance. The more plate area you've got, the higher the capacitance. But the longer the, or the bigger the distance between the plates, then the lower the capacitance. Relative permittability, or dielectric constant K, indicates the ability of a dielectric to support an electrostatic field compared to an air or a vacuum, which both have an absolute permeability of 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. And again, you don't have to remember that one. Whenever you've got to do an equation, they will give you that value. Capacitor construction depends on the intended use, such as power transmission, high voltage, high reactive power, motors and electric appliances for medium voltage and medium power, and electronics and communications for those low power, high frequency applications, particularly those ceramic capacitors. Capacitors are rated by their maximum working voltage and in power applications by the reactive power they can handle. So that's how they're rated. When a capacitor is charged or discharged through a resistance, a certain amount of time will elapse before the capacitor is fully charged or fully discharged. Remember, the time constants. So for parallel connected capacitors, the total capacitance is the sum of the individual capacitance values the voltage is the same across all capacitors, and the charge on an individual capacitor is the product of its capacitance value and the supply voltage. For series connected capacitors though, each capacitor holds the same charge, and the total capacitance is always smaller than the smallest capacitor. The equations to find capacitance are similar to those that we use for parallel resistors, remember. So 1 on C total is equal to 1 on C1 plus 1 on C2 plus 1 on C3, etc, etc, etc. The voltage drop across individual capacitors is a, in a series is directly proportional to the capacitance value and is equal to the sum of the supply voltages. In an RC circuit, that's resistance times capacitance, the time taken depends on the circuit's time constant, tau, which equals the product of the resistance in ohms, the capacitance in farads. That is time constant, RC. One time constant is the time taken for the voltage or the current in an RC circuit to change by 63.2%. Remember we say change because if we're 
charging at capacitor, we're charging up. So it's charged up by 63%. Or if we're discharging, we're discharging from 100% down. So it's down by 63%. So it's a 63.2% change. Current and voltage in an RC circuit change in an exponential manner. And the values can be calculated or found using the universal time constant curve. Best to use the curve, it's much easier. And finally, because all RC circuits behave the same way, current and voltage values with respect to time can be found using the universal time constant curves. These express current or voltage as a percentage, vertical axis, and time is on the horizontal. So voltage and current is always on the vertical, and time is always on the horizontal. So this brings us to the end of all our DC theory and the end of DC lesson 10. I hope you've enjoyed the um, introduction and learning about DC all the way from uh, how electricity is generated and stored right through to how it works in capacitors. So this is Dr. Ken signing off.